just want to thank each and every person who has reached out to me about Maddox wanting to help find him. I would appreciate it if you were at the park Saturday and saw Maddox. So please, urgently, please call the tip line, please. Continue praying for him because I just want my baby home, please. Whatever you can do. Maddox is my whole world and my reason for living. He's mama's boy. Maddox loves the park. He loves bouncy balls and he loves his teddy bear. His smile is so contagious and his laughter is so precious. If you think that you have seen Maddox, please reach out to police. Thank you all for your love and support. And I just want to say, I want my baby back in my arms. One thing I'll add before we begin the rest of the press conference, Maddox's father, Ian, is at the park with us now. He is retracing their route where they were and their day. That is why he is not with us right now. He is with us across the street helping with this investigation and to further this case. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Helt and I'm the police chief here in Gastonia. It's been 75 agonizing hours since six-year-old Maddox Rich disappeared. 75 hours. We don't want another hour to pass before we find him and bring him home. The law enforcement and search efforts that have, been, have answered the call to help us has just been humbling. Since Saturday, there have been 260 law enforcement investigators, agents, analysts, and other personnel that have been working around the clock to find Maddox. We have followed more than 150 leads, conducted hundreds of interviews, gathered surveillance video from stores all over the area, searched thousands of acres of land on foot with ATVs and by boat. But we haven't found Maddox. Everywhere I go and where our officers go, people are asking, how can I help? Hundreds of people were in the park Saturday. We feel sure that more people noticed Maddox than the ones that we have talked to. In particular, some of the witnesses that we have spoken to saw a professional pr photographer out there that day, and we'd like to talk with him. He was described as a white male in his early 30s. He was taking photos of three white children dressed in Dr. Seuss costumes, holding balloons. Both their parents were there as well. We would like to talk to all of those people if they could make a call to us and talk with us. There was also a male jogger nearby that we haven't been able to identify and we would like to talk to him as well. It's so important for folks to call us and to let us know what they saw and what they saw that day so that we can put together a timeline of exactly where Maddox was at and the last time that he was seen at the park. These people are valuable witnesses. Even if you don't think you can help, please call us and let us decide if your information can help us. There are a lot of children in the park Saturday, including some other blonde haired boys wearing orange shirts. But we need to know if you saw our blonde hair boy with the orange shirt. The special tip line, again, is 704-869-1075. 704-869-1075. At this time, I will turn it over to Gastonia Fire Chief Phil Welch, who's going to talk a little bit about the search efforts. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Phil Welch. I'm the Fire Chief of the City of Gastonia. Uh, me and my department have been involved in the search uh, from the start. Uh, to give you an idea of the effort, and I know most of you have been just outside the uh, park entrance and have seen uh, multiple uh, agencies, uh, firefighter, EMS, police officers come and go uh, through the facility. Um, as you probably know, the park area is approximately 250 acres. Uh, it is bounded by some swamp lands. Uh, fenced area and we've searched and researched every day with new search personnel every piece of the, the property. Uh, our personnel have changed, they're all trained, uh, they are firefighter 
uh, law enforcement and EMS, uh, emergency management, uh, some specialty teams uh, with some specialty trained dogs. Uh, you've seen the helicopters, which one is uh, flying now. We have drone teams there uh, every day, even beginning Saturday evening. Uh, we've had Charlotte firefighters that are here with sonar boats and divers every day. Uh, so we're trying everything. We've gone beyond the entrance of the park, as you've seen the, uh, the personnel come and go, and we've expanded our search. Uh, for If you know the, the geography of Gastonia, we've gone to the east, uh, bounded to the south by I-85, and we've gone to the east just at three miles. Uh, we've traveled Long Creek uh, on up to about four miles now, uh, and we just expanded on that. We've already set personnel in place for tomorrow and we will continue to cover the park and the uh, areas outside the park. FBI. Thank you. I just wanted to include two other pieces of information, and one is that the FBI is now including a $10,000 reward for information that's going to help us find Maddox. Um, but I also wanted to make a plea uh, to individuals that might uh, not understand the damage that can occur when they uh, forward messages about maybe Maddox being found or details that aren't actually true. Um, I'm not sure if I can express how difficult uh, that is for family to have to endure. And so I hope that people uh, keep in mind when they, they push some piece of information out and start spreading it through social media, uh, that at the very minimum, it's damaging uh, the, the mother and the father and the family members who are so desperately searching uh, for Maddox, but it also can complicate uh, the investigation and the search that we have. Um, so I please would just ask that if you don't see the information coming from an official source such as Gastonia PD or the FBI, uh, I really think uh, it's irresponsible for you to continue to push that message out, and I would ask that you would not do that anymore on behalf of all of us who are searching for Maddox. Thank you. We'll take a few questions at this point. Where are you seeing those fake reports coming from? I don't think I'm going to go into the details, but a lot of them are individuals, and, and that's really where we're seeing them. And many times they've been forwarded multiple times, and they start gathering a lot of uh, attention, and it, it takes us time to get to the source. Uh, typically, in this case, we've identified the source of the information, and we have a conversation with them to make sure that they don't continue. Well, it's, it's not only is it uh, depleting resources for us to have to do that instead of having our agents and detectives in, investigating or having the search parties potentially stop the search that they're doing because they believe that something's changed. So I would say that that's probably the least damaging and probably the greatest damage is to a mother and a father who are desperate to get any information they can about their child. I mean, we're looking at multiple places, but we, as far as the um, landfill this morning, we thought anything that was somewhere you've been researched or just kind of a routine place that you guys might look? I don't think it's uncommon in other cases such as this where a child goes missing that we would search everywhere, including landfills and dumpster dives. It really is for us part of the SOP, and I don't think anyone should take too much uh, away from the fact that we're doing that. We're just, once again, making sure that we cover every single uh, lead that we have. Well, we confirmed a couple of locations today. The, over a house on uh, Shelby Road in Kings Mountain, uh, and also the land, the Gaston County landfill. Are either of those connected? Can, can we? Can, can you all confirm that searches there happen and connected to the search for Maddox? Yes, those locations are both connected in the sense that they're part of this community, and they do, and that's why we would pay special attention to those locations. But I don't think that anyone should take too much information away that we went to those locations. What can you tell us about the friend or the so whoever it was that was with the father that night in the park? Nothing. Is that, is that person helping with the father at the park right now? That, that person is helping in this investigation, not necessarily with the father right now. We heard reports um, from dispatchers that there was a delay in the initial reporting of Maddox being missing. Can you confirm that? Was there a delay? If so, how long was it? And who was it who initially called in that he was missing? You know, there, I think initially when he went missing, I, I believe there was some time that they began looking. Uh, a part-time park employee was the one that actually reported this, uh, realized, hey, we need to get the police out here, and was good enough to go ahead and make that call and call in. Uh, when he did call in, and we're working on releasing that 911 call, but when he did call in, he had very limited information, uh, very limited information about Maddox or anything that was happening, just knew that they was someone that was lost. And so he called in and, and, and got the police on the way out there. Chief Welch, how deep is that lake? Um, normally, it's 12 and a half feet at the deepest point. 
uh, as it set when we began the search, it was ten and a half feet. It had dropped, and we've been dropping the lake now. So it is down to the deepest point now is about eight and a half feet, and it's continuing to be drained. Can you talk about what areas of the search? I know that you said yesterday you were retracing, backtracking. Are there any areas of the park? around the park that you completed the search and you're confident that you don't need to look there again? We completely, we searched the park completely every day. And different team would come in the next day and research it. And honestly, for the past two days, there was a morning search and an afternoon search. So we've had been over the park multiple times with different teams. Is there any information specific to Madison's where he falls along the autism spectrum in terms of what he may be attracted to, places where he may be, um, that you may search more than others, whether it be the water, um, heard that in terms of children along the spectrum. Any information about this form of autism? Well, I, I, the answer to your question is yes, there is information, and that information has been shared with us, and we're using that in our efforts to try to find them. Now, I don't, I don't think I would feel comfortable sharing that information because I think it's personal about Maddox, but uh, that is absolutely something that we need to consider when we're looking for somebody who's on the spectrum, and that information has been presented to the searchers. It's been part of the search. I think you're aware that, that we used his mom and dad's voice because we felt that that would be something that would be helpful to bring him uh, out of the wood line if he was there. So the answer is yes. The fact of the father um, telling you guys that he was in the park, have you had any other collaborating evidence that points to the child being in the park on Saturday? Yes, we have. Can you speak to why he's not eligible for an Amber Alert? There, there's very specific criteria uh, to, to be met, and, and in, in this case so far has not met that criteria. Uh, we did recheck with the National Center yesterday to see if this would qualify, and again, it, it does not at this point. But really, when you have an Amber Alert, one of the things that you want to push out is like a vehicle description or a tag number, and you want to get that out everywhere for folks to be on the lookout for, and we really don't have that right now to push out. The main thing that we want to do is push out that he's missing and his identity, and you guys have been great to help us do that, and I really have appreciated the coverage. This morning was wonderful to see this all over all the news agencies, and we really do appreciate that help. And that's the main thing that we want to get out right now is that he's missing, and anybody that has information or that has seen him, to please, please call us. We're looking into the criteria for the Amber Alert. It was about uh, detaining an abduction or not, and is it accurate to say that you guys haven't, you don't think he's been abducted and not into why it's not been listed as Amber Alert or you know, right now we're not ruling anything out. We're looking at all possibilities and I'm sure you all have questions. We have questions and we're we're trying to explore all of those. But the facts that we have right now is that he was at the park and we feel like he was at the park and so that's where our concentration is at right now. Do you, have, question. Any, do you have any people uh you know, persons of interest right now and if so how many different people I mean I know you wouldn't name who they are but do you actually have people that are persons of interest which is terminology you guys use all the time? I think the way I would answer that is that there are, and it's it's part of why we're leveraging and, and working with the media, and principally the persons of interest that we have now are witnesses who can help us construct a very specific timeline, and that's why we need the individuals who are at that park to come forward. So we really appreciate it. As the Chief said, it's been invaluable to have you guys spread the message. We really hope to find them. Thank you. So as we've done um, this week, we're going to uh, take the comments here and we will put them together as a press release that we push out. We're going to continue to post uh, photos of the search. I know that you guys cannot access every area where we are. Uh, we are getting those folks to send pictures to us. Uh, we have some on Facebook right now of kayakers who were out today. Uh, we are pushing that on Facebook as well as the FBI's Twitter page. We greatly appreciate everything that you guys are doing to help us. I would ask that no one try to continue to directly reach out to Maddox's mother. Again, it took her this long to feel comfortable to give a public statement, and she, if she gets to the point where she wants to make another statement or where Ian, Maddox's father, is comfortable to make a statement, that will come through us in this venue or if we decide to move to another location. But it will not be in any other place other than with us by our side. It's, it's just overwhelming. Uh, for a, can you just imagine being being in that situation? Um, I don't anticipate we'll have anything else on camera today. Uh, we will continue to push out regular updates uh, in time for for some of your newscasts. Um, check the Facebook, check the Twitter. We are providing as much information as we can, and it's really really important. I know we keep saying it. It is really important that we hear from anyone 
in the park that may have seen something that can help us. Thank you all. When will the park reopen? I don't know. The it's closed until further notice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.